Hello there Facebook, how's it going? Today I've been vegan for five years. It's my five year vegan anniversary, if you want to call it. And I've been wanting to make this video to talk about what I've learned. And I'm going to be inviting one of my guests, well, a guest on here as well, who has an incredible experience, who shared with me something that was really very traumatic and very eye-opening and kind of remind me of why I started this journey to begin with and why I decided to start helping other people. And we were starting, we did this live earlier and I want us to continue um, the live right now. And I'm gonna add Allison on because uh, we had a really, really good conversation about solutions. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap. Hey, Kevin. Hey there. How's it going? Good. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, and me? All right. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so we were talking about a post that you shared with me about an activist that had committed suicide, and they were putting themselves in a situation where they were, I think, watching their slaughter footage or maybe bearing witness, which is something that is really... Uh, you know, kind of commonly pushed, like, you, you need to do this and you need to go experience this. And, and for a lot of people, it can be very eye-opening, but then there's also, you know, those other people that could be really traumatically impacted by it. And I know firsthand I was, you know, impacted, you know, tremendously. I had suicidal thoughts um, and even starting my whole journey of helping anyone started with uh, suicide in my family. And so we had talked about that. And then we were talking about how a lot of people get stuck in their problems right and which is understandable because like you you see all these issues and they could be really terrible whether it's like everything that's going in animal agriculture or medical malpractice or you know big pharma or you know plant agriculture all these sort of things or even starving children in africa wherever you want to look like you could find a lot of things that are wrong you could really focus and hyper fixate on those things and some of those things we can't we can't do anything about right now you know what i mean like some things like maybe starving children in africa maybe we can't do anything about that right now you know what i mean but there's some things that we talked about we can do in our own lives and make an impact right from being a good role model and being a uh a, being an example of of what people would need to see and that's that's really something that i've learned if i'm going to stop talk about one one huge thing that i learned you know from being vegan over five years it's one of the most important thing is is being a good role model of what what people you know what you want the world to be like you know what i mean like okay let's say let's say we want to make a change in the world and we want the world to be a better place but you know we're complaining or screaming or, or whatever situation we're doing like is that really what what we want or or how we want to live like no one wants to live like that being like oh well i have to do this because the world's like this and, and this sort of stuff you know what i mean and it it seems counterintuitive but you actually make a, you can make a bigger impact or a huge impact by being by being that good role model but then another thing that i learned um is that there's solutions that we can do about this you know what i mean like we can like we learn I process the information, I realize and I recognize there's a problem, right? And now let's go find and fix the solutions for that, you know what I mean? And so that's one of the biggest things that I found. And, and that's really kind of, for me personally, like, like why I started this entire journey at all when I shared anything on social media. Like I didn't share anything on social media at all. It was like once every six months, here's a picture of a sunset or here's some random food or something. But once I realized that I can make an impact, that was the whole purpose. It was like, how can I make, so imagine if I'm online, and this is just me personally, but imagine if I'm online and I'm sharing all this stuff that isn't making a big impact, I would feel kind of defeated, you know, and feel like like um, like I'm not having a, any kind of purpose, you know what I mean? And that's not for everyone, but I think there's a lot of people out there and you can agree that do want to make an impact and that is why they're that is why they're sharing so much but they realize that maybe they're not making the impact that they think that they're making or they can actually make a bigger impact of making some shifts or they're just like in an echo chamber because all their friends are <laughs> think the same way maybe or already agree with that so you're not really changing too many hearts and minds that way right and i think that's why people get out like oh well what's the next best thing let me go be active 
Let me go be an activist. I got to get on the streets. I have to, and that's one way. And I'm not saying that you can't do that. There's a lot of different ways. I still do that sometimes, right? And I think that there it can have an impact. But yeah, so we were talking about you know some of the key solutions. So maybe if you want to share, you know, a little bit of like what if you've been now like six, seven years, right? What is something maybe that you've learned as far as like making a big impact on people and what solutions have worked? Yeah. Well. Well, see exactly your shift from stepping into purpose like it's like a le- that's what a leader does and you know we if we want to make a change in this world if we're passionate about anything we need to step into leadership and to be an effective leader is to lead by example and we are not going to win any hearts um the same way you know there's that expression that you uh like you can't fight hate with hate like well, only love can you know, combat hate. And so when there's more aggression and, um, and fighting, um, you know, to get the point, it's actually going to do the opposite of what they intend to do. It's actually going to push more people away. And I've seen this firsthand. I've seen people say, like, I would never go vegan because vegans are crazy. And they're like yelling at everyone. And it's like, it leaves them, it's like they're not even open to listening to what they're saying because of the of the message of how it's being delivered um and i've been much so my journey started with being an angry very very emotional and you know really distraught vegan and that's where i started but then i learned through experience that i wasn't winning anyone over and i wasn't changing minds um in that approach and I started to study leadership. I started to really look into, if you want to make a change in this world, what you do. Um, and so I started with myself. All we can do is ourselves. All we can control is what we do. And, um, you know, the biggest difference, because I, I definitely had an upgrade just going vegan alone. And, um, you know, by the way, happy vegan anniversary, Kevin. <laughs> I just saw that. Um, so, like, yeah, like I definitely had a huge improvement and I think everyone does. They think that's where it ends, right? They think that's the be all and end all, but it's still a journey because then it gets into deeper things. Like how are we going to live optimally and sustainably in a future that actually respects the earth and, you know, all of this harmony that, you know, there's a lot of problems, like you said. So it's a deep. And really quick, really quick, you're more powerful and you have, more influence the more things that you learn the more ways that you learn to help people you know what i mean if you only know one way of activism my only way i know is going out to the streets if that's the only thing that you know you're going to struggle helping people you know what i mean how are you going to help people like what if someone like and that's also when i watch like the debates i still watch people do debates sometimes when i watch that and when they bring up when someone's like oh well um but my issue is my doctor said I have this condition, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever, whatever health issue. And I'm like, I know the answer. I have a solution for that. But the, the activist is like, yeah, well, um, you know, you're not, they don't have, they don't, they don't have an answer. They're like, well, you've got to talk to your doctor or it can work or the medical system, you know, whatever they say, most of the time they're like stuck and they're stumped. So I always say like, and why, why not have so many solutions and so many options for someone like i can i can come across almost anyone now whatever they're going through and be like i think i have some solutions for you like i have some answers before i'd be like i guess go to the doctor or i guess go see a professional or i guess and i guess i guess i guess i was just guessing i had no idea how to help them but i want inside i felt like i wanted to but i really didn't have any good answers or any good solutions for that, but that's why I think that this this is more powerful having all these different ways. And that's the other thing too is let's say you're doing X X thing to help people, right? Whatever it is, right? What you shouldn't do, especially if you're on the same team and you have the same mission, you shouldn't shame and criticize people that are doing something different. Like I still celebrate the activists that are on the streets because that's hard shit and it's not easy and it's not fun. And somebody's got to do it, you know. And then the other thing is for, for us that are doing maybe something that's different right now, right? It should be some of that should be celebrated as well because we're reaching other people that you can't reach. You have no idea how to reverse some chronic diseases maybe, and that's okay. But we do, and you know what happens when someone realizes the power of plants inside their body, they're like, oh my gosh, plants can make me feel this great and so much better. 
now they're open minded. Now they're like, oh really? They're, it's really that cruel? Oh shoot, it's also bad for the environment. Oh shoot, this too and this and this. And now you planted a seed that's grown in this huge tree. Now they have hundreds of reasons, and, you know, to, to stick to the lifestyle versus a few. And you know what? And it's a deeper um, it's a deeper decision because it's their decision. You know, when you empower someone, you can't shame someone into make, doing anything. Um, shame will never, even if it works for a short temporary time, it won't work over long run. It has to come from the person's decision, a deep decision. And if we empower yeah, people- Like some shame might, might cause a trigger or might cause a small shift, but you're right, it's not sustainable. You know, when that it can it can have like yes, yeah, like short term benefits. Exactly. And you know what? It actually can cause a lot of damage. It can push a lot of people away who would have maybe been open in another approach, right? So um it's really important also because as a leader, we're solution finders, right? Leaders are solution finders. They don't complain about what's going on. They roll up their sleeves and they do something about it and they find solutions. And so it's really important if you want to be the change, if you want to, if you have any activism, whatever you, you're like, you know, whatever you need to, if you want to make a difference, you need to step into leadership and understand that that requires, like you said, many different approaches and solutions um, and being well connected and supported which is another big reason why we've locked arms and why I see so much uh, destruction um, toxicity in the vegan community because it's like we forget that we're on the same mission and there's so much shaming even within I had to leave some of the vegan groups because I was getting attacked for talking about health um, you know, which is like you said, which is an approach to helping people go vegan. And, you know, we can't like the worst thing we can do is try and tear each other down because it's like, we're on the same team. What is that? We need to change that because and you know what, you know what happens? The first question everyone asks after they make the decision, I'm going to go vegan. What am I going to eat? We have to help people give them what they're going to eat, you know? And so like. If it's if we're gonna give them something to eat, why not give them the best, like the best that we know possible, not like something that's just mediocre or you know, like just as bad. I, you know what I see all the time in vegan communities, um, like supporting McDonald's for going plant based, and you know, oh, we have to buy KFC chicken nuggets now because like it's supporting the vegan movement. I don't see that as supporting the vegan movement, actually. Um, you know, you're still supporting a huge destructor and huge enemy of animals and our environment. And it's making people sick. And what good is that? If we're feeding, okay, yes, it's good that there's options. Yes, it's better than eating meat. No one is denying that. But, you know, I get attacked just today. I posted something about Beyond Burger being not real food. And I got a lot of attacks from vegans. And it's really disheartening. I mean, luckily, I'm well supported. And in like, you know, I'm well loved because if I wasn't and I was struggling out there as a vegan, just trying to, you know, share my truth and my experience, um, it's, it's pretty scary. The kind of community that we've created, that, that's been created in this. Um, you might give up. Yes. And that's what a lot of people do. They, they give up and they're like, well, how can you give up? Like, it doesn't make sense. And it's like, I think one of the biggest struggles that most, one of the other things I've learned that huge of the biggest struggles that, that vegans go through is the social pressure. Not only the social pressure from every single person that is against you already, the 97% that aren't vegan, but also the 3% that are, are also not on your team. Like, it's, it's a, and then you're like, well, for, for the animals, yeah, but like some people are not that strong. Some people can not take that much. Like I'm, I'm okay being alone. I can, I'm comfortable. I, I'm actually okay with it. Some people cannot even stand it. They need to be around people. They need to be hyper social. And so the social aspect, you know, causes them, you know, to give in. But then, and then they look for an excuse, and they find them because you could go find. You just type in ex-vegan, 
right? And YouTube, and you can find a lot of stories and a lot of excuses to justify, you know, your actions, right? And this is why we're here, right? Because there are so many people who say veganism didn't work for me. I got sick. I was malnourished. My hair was falling out. I was this and that. I hear every single story. And you know what I hear from non-vegans all the time is, oh, I won't go vegan because I know someone who's vegan who has bags under their eyes and they, they look so sick. Okay, we need to be the example. Yes, we need to talk about health because if we want to make this sustainable and actually rise to a, a level where people are like, I want whatever they're doing, you know, and that's when we actually create influence so um it's really important that we do start talking about health in the vegan community and we're not shaming each other for whatever activism we are taking because i'm telling you i've been blocked i've been i've been brutally bullied by some vegans out there and i know you have too i'm sure because we're you know talking about similar things but it's not okay that vegans are shaming other vegans and policing when there's a bigger, we're part of this, we're on the same mission and we really do need unity, not div there's enough divisiveness. Stop finding why we're different and start uniting on what are, like, what do we all care about, okay? We all care about uh, this earth, right? We all can't do anything. No animals can live or anything can live if this earth is dying, okay? So we can all agree that we care about the planet. We can all agree that we, you know, need our bodies to be functioning if we're going to be even do it. Like, we need to be healthy. Like, why can't we all unite? And that actually can unite non-vegans as well because then we're actually opening the door to more people. When we focus on unity, what unites us, then we can actually start to come together and really, you know, our superpower is unlocked when we come together on a common. So. Yeah, I absolutely uh, definitely agree. I think I think the the thing that holds people back is uh, oftentimes it's just the actual word itself. Sometimes the defin the just the word vegan itself and just the definition you know like it means this to me it means this to me it means that you know what i mean and instead of just being like forget what that dang word means and just do what's right you know and just do what you know is right um for other people and not get so so hung up on it and also wait why why are we so fixated on saying like well we can only fight about one we can only fight for one thing at a time you know what i mean like why why can't you fight for animals and people's health at the same time? Yeah. Like I, I can walk and chew gum at the same time. Like I can't. It's, I even if I had a job, like I could go finish that job and then go do something else. I don't have to only do one thing or the other thing. I'm not in a box. Like I can. And if I choose to fight for multiple causes. And like you can do that as well. Like one doesn't take away from the other. In fact, they complement each other, especially when they complement each other and yeah. they work together. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I think. You know, we're coming. It's like we're coming back to holistic health, right? Holistic health means that we're looking at everything, and that means we're looking at our environment. We're looking at um, you know everything in our body, how it's all connected. And you know, we found a way that actually connects our purpose with um our, our health and with building community and with our income as well so it's like we actually have landed upon a really rare gem of um you know trifecta of all the things and and it really you know it, it's not a vegan movement okay there's no label it's it's really not um but that a lot of vegans get like hung up like you said in the box like if it's not just about veganism then i can't do it but the 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 uh the side effects of what we're doing is helping people go vegan and also about environment um and you know reducing plastic and all of these other things and also making money so that we can become you know more um effective in what our goals are that's that's a good example like there's so many things that you can do like all wrapped in one potentially right and like one kind of mission whereas like even making money some people think well the only way i can make money i've got to do a job it has to, like that's my, my job is my money and my passion is something else like they can't mix they can't go together you know what i mean like they're too different you know um and i think that that's an example of like you're putting yourself 
in this box, you know, where like where where you're stuck, where like that's that's the only way that you can that you can do whatever you're trying to do, you know. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I almost, you say something? Feel, I almost feel like vegan, um, from what my experience is, you know, being in the community for many years and seeing. If, is there a weird feedback, by the way? Do you hear? Okay. No, I so uh, it was a wind. It started getting windy inside. Oh, okay. It's not really yeah. that windy. I was hearing that. Okay, good. That's much better. Um, so I've seen that it's almost like a martyrdom. It's like I have to suffer in life. Um, and there's almost this like they're hanging on to their struggle, and it's a lot of victim, a lot, a lot of, a lot of victim. Um, you know, I feel a lot of victim energy coming from that uh, collective. And I see like a lot of people, it's like they're not open to wanting to get out of victimhood because, you know, I guess there's so much identifying maybe with the suffering of the animals um, and with the cause that they almost feel that their success is like, you know, um, it's like almost like maybe they've had themselves convinced that they need to suffer to be a, a martyr, you know, and um, we don't need to suffer actually, you know, and we're trying to liberate people from the nine to five grind because if we can liberate most of those jobs, first of all, are not in alignment, you know, of course, with what they're trying to do. They're not, most jobs are not vegan jobs. And, um, and I've had vegans who work, like, literally, I had a vegan who works at Sephora, okay, she works at a makeup store for minimum wage, and I presented her with this opportunity, and she, um, she, she was actually loving the cleanse, she was having a good experience, okay, she did six days of it, and then she found out that it's not, a, like, a, a vegan movement, like, it's not, like, a vegan, 100% vegan company, and, you know, because we do have bee pollen, and we do have, like, there's three ingredients that are not, but we don't even buy those products, and they're very, it's, like, one ingredient, it, it's not, like, a big part of it, like, it's not, they're not even, you know, it's, it's so, it's so negligible, but she, completely returned her package because she, she said it was on me. But I'm like, you work at Sephora. Like, you're working with products that are tested on animals. That's what you're promoting. And you're making a, like, slave minimum wage where you could actually, be, like, people are not making the connection. And she was mean to me. Like, she had like, blocked me, okay? Like, it was really brutal. And I had given her a lot, a lot of power. I've, I've seen similar, like, working at a supermarket. Like, you're working at a supermarket. Like, is every single ingredient in the whole supermarket no. perfectly vegan? Like, no, and like, and like, are the, all the people that work above you, are they all vegan and they're, the, are they making money? You know, who's paying the bills? Who's, you know, who's funding the, the ads? Like, are they vegan? Like all this sort of stuff, you know, like where you're shopping, you know, even if you're shopping, like who shops at hundred percent vegan stores every single time they go on every single place they go, you know, and I don't know a single vegan that does the most hardcore one, you know, well, maybe. <laughs> I might think of maybe one or two, but either way, like I, I totally agree with that. And even going back to like the martyrdom and, you know, identifying with the suffering, you know, I think sometimes a lot of, a lot of them have already traumas that they've gone through, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, younger, like maybe childhood traumas. Yeah. And sometimes the, the the trauma is associated with that, and it and then it's almost like um, how you say it feels comfortable, you know, being in in the trauma because they were they've been used to that and they haven't got out of they haven't been healed from the trauma, you know. So sometimes um, that could definitely be the part, and like also the guilt, like the guilt and the shame. Like I felt that I was like I feel guilty. I almost felt like I deserve to be punished. Mm. right because i was paying for this too yeah. i caused this like i should i should have punishment for my actions <laughs> you know what i mean well, and a lot of people think that and if they don't it's some sign it's subconscious they might not admit yeah. it yeah well that really brings us to why you know we're out here talking because um you know the mental health and trauma and you know um i think a lot of people go vegan because they've experienced trauma in their life so they can identify with what the animals are going through so i think it's really highly correlated and i completely agree and that's why i think you and i have you know really woken up to needing to um because we've gone through our own mental health and you know struggles and everything we we need to bring mental health to vegans we need to empower vegans to heal 
and we can do that. Even trauma can be healed through gut health. Like, I don't think enough people understand that even things that are circumstantial, okay, they, they could be completely not, you're not born with it, it's all like a chemical amount, you, you just, you know, yes, even that is healed when we heal our gut because um, trauma deeply affects our gut health and it affects all aspects of our health. Even last year when I went, like we talked about this, the, an, the animal liberation conference, where it's like, like supposedly the number, the biggest conference for animal liberation, they have all the tools. That's what they talk about. Oh, we have all the tools, the access, the best ways to help liberate animals, right? They're serving all junk food. It was all processed. Here's the Beyond Burgers, you know, for your barbecue. Here's this junk food. There was nothing healthy. They taught one person out of every single talk, every single conversation talked about mental health. One person. I was really proud. I was really surprised. I, honestly, I went up to her. I got her information. I talked to her. I was like, this is amazing. We need more of this. Like, this is really good. And what she shared was incredible. It's like, whoa, these are really great tips. She did a lot of good. She did like these activities with us. And it was like really effective activities and like these circles. And we talked about like our feelings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was really, it was like, it's maybe seemed woo woo, but it was actually really good advice. I was like, this girl knows what she's talking about. And it was great advice. And I was like, like, everyone here needs this. I was just watching their eyes and watching their faces. And I was like, every single person here needs what this person is talking about. You know, like, this is important. Like, we need more of this kind of stuff, you know? Um, and that's what we do. That, that is literally what we do. Like, I, it might be this one little tiny outlier in an animal liberation conference, but we do that every single day. Every single Wednesday, we have a mastermind, you know, where, like, we come together and we work together, like, and we work out our problems and figure out solutions and get better. Like, that doesn't have to be a once-a-year, 30-minute thing. That could be, you know, once a week, every Every day you know constantly consistently you know what i mean like taking care of yourself yes. so but yeah like that's the contrast you know that that's happening and, and what we're dealing with and i even saw people they're like they want to help the animals and they want to fight and they're they actually have to stop because that headache their stomach ache they're actually not physical issues that they can't keep going yes you're healthier good job you're healthier than the average american that's not an accomplishment <laughs> like they're not healthy anyways. It, it, being a little bit healthier than an unhealthy person isn't that great an accomplishment. Like being in group, so great health that you can actually do all the things that you care about and accomplish your dreams or whatever, you know, you want to fight for your sanctuary, you want to create a sanctuary, you want to actually liberate animals. Like you've got to have your health. Otherwise, you're going to not do any of that stuff. And yeah. you'll just be like a sick American that you've been, been blasting this last few years or whatever. Yes, no, absolutely. Absolutely. It's so important that we talk about mental health and community. So many people, like, you know, I feel so sad for all the, I feel sad for myself because I joined veganism for the community. Honestly, it was really big. Like, I really was looking for that. Some people, that's their first, that's their first time they've ever had a community. Yeah. Like, for me, when I was a new vegan, I was the first time I ever had any kind of community. You know, like minded individuals, you know, fighting for a cause. It like felt really good. Yeah. Good. No, exactly. And that's, you know, that's what's so sad is that there's so many, um, all ages, young people, but also older people looking for community and they come into veganism. And unfortunately, um, what we've learned is it's not as supportive and um, kind as we imagined that it would be. Um, and that's why we actually do need to focus on building it as a community. If anything is going to grow and expand, it's going to be because of healthy foundation healthy community um and so um it's really really important you know that's why we created kind human tribe is to have that because it is it's all about ahimsa right and at the end of the day like it's like i think vegan is like kind of like the more modern world word but really what it is is how because we can't completely never kill anything like we're all you know we're walking down the street we're driving there's whatever like i mean there's little microbes like we can't say we can't claim to never kill anything okay it just happens sometimes but what we can do is how we can create as least harm as possible and um you know i think that's really what kind human community is a, is based on is how we can support one another how we can live better how we can cause least harm how we can you know elevate each other and 
um, and celebrate each other because there's none of that in the vegan community. I just, I, I find it's a really big missing gap. And we are here, I guess, to fill that gap because it absolutely needs to, more and more people need to be talking about mental health. Even, well, I'll just share one last thing as well. And like, you know more details about this because I shared with you, but even in what seems like the most ideal situation um, where you have a vegan community, where you think everything's going to be ideal and you're going to have a retreat and your vegan restaurant and gardens and sanctuary, right? And you're like, everything seems great. Like everything seems like, you know, perfect, right? One person can have poor health and destroy it all. <laughs> like have it all just be not, not there, right? And they're vegan and they believe in everything that we believe in. I mean, they have the same mission, but they're not taking care of themselves, right? And that's an that's an example, you know what I mean, of what we're of what we're talking about. So, like, really, I have learned in a lot of different ways. You've learned a lot of different ways. Learned the hard way. Like, you have like you have to take care of your health first, and you have to prioritize that and do do that, make that your best. And that's kind of like the thing within even the kind human tribe. Like you have, like that's your first commitment is to yourself. You have to commit to yourself first. You know what I mean? If you're like, you prove, okay, you're going to commit to yourself and take care of yourself. Well, now we'll give you every single tool and everything you need to start taking care of others, right? And that's kind of like a unique premise, right? That like a lot of a lot of the places don't have, right? It might be like your first commitment, like, are you vegan? How how long have you been vegan? Why are you vegan? As the as the as the baseline, which is which is great. And amazing, but you see a lot of the issues that, that happen, you know, um, within some of them um, and falling apart. Or like your perfect example of what you said earlier, which is just so true. I see it all the time. Like, like when someone's like, why aren't you vegan? Or why, why was you going to be vegan? Oh, I have a friend who was sick or this and this and that. Right. And then you and then what was the other thing that you said? Um, yeah, or people start to lose their own health and, you know, they try it and they, they start, their health starts to fall apart. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're like, they, they said that they gave it a shot or they tried it or whatever and their excuse is like, why I got sick and this and this and that, right? You know, so like, it has, like, it just makes so much sense that it, it should and has to be the foundation of like all the things that we're doing. Yeah. But really, like, whatever you're doing, even if you don't even care about veganism or anything like that, you want to be like anything in the world, like, if you're sick and and dying you can't do it no no I, I, at every i think everyone at some point is going to realize you know health is all there is it just it, it hits different people at different times and we're almost blessed to have been faced with that you know um in different ways from a young age because it, oftentimes people only realize that at the end and it's too late they've already destroyed their health it's so, like too late they're like well i got cancer and diabetes and heart disease and you're like shoot all of those and then it's like, well, I just got, it just happened. It didn't just happen. Like, that was developing for the last 30, 40 years. That didn't just happen. Yeah. Well, it's important because people don't even know how good we're actually supposed to feel. So we've normalized so many, you know, um, so many health conditions. And like you said, we're not well adjusted. Like being um, like a well adjusted, like being normal in a sick society is not, you know, is not normal. Like you have to be about, like we're surrounded with so much sickness that we've normalized being like a little less sick. Like, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm healthy because I'm a little bit doing better than my neighbor. But it's like, no, like there's levels and we need to experience what it feels like. Most people just don't even know what it feels like to feel um, to feel like they're really at their optimal, best mental, spiritual, physical self. And um, and like you said, you know, it takes one rotten, one like toxic, just like it takes one toxic ingredient to spoil uh, like a water, you know, or anything. Like it just takes one drop of something to really spoil everything. And so in community, it's important that we look after our members, that the members that are in a community are healthy and i've tried to help people who are not ready to and i've brought them into the community because i'm like i know they need this and they, but they their toxicity will like spread and actually cause a lot of damage i have to do a lot of damage control sometimes because sometimes my heart is like so big i want to help everyone but you know if someone is not a hundred percent like i am ready to heal and feel better i want to be my best self then you can 
can't, um, yeah, they, they're, it, it has to be for those who really want to. Yeah, well, you kind of have to, you know what I mean? Because what do you do if you don't do that? Then it, then the toxicity spreads on your whole community, and now you have nothing. Like, it, it, spread to, it spread to everywhere, you know? And so you had to, like a cancer, it's spreading. You got to fix it. Yeah. Like, let's, let's attack that, you know, and, and, and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you have to cut people out. Um, and that's, you know, something that's really hard as a healer, for sure. Um, knowing when to, like you were saying with your friend who had the, the sanctuary and you really wanted to help her and she ended up getting more sick. And now it's like, you know, she's really sick. And we we did our best. You know, we have to say that we at least we tried. And that's why we're out there trying. So we feel like, why are you talking about this so much? Why are you talking about uh, Purium? Why are you talking about gut health? Why are you talking? It's like, because there's someone out, like, even if I can help one person, then I've done my job. And I don't care how many people I'll piss off talking about this. But when someone is ready and I didn't do my job, if I didn't do, if I, if, if I look back at it, I didn't do what I, like, if I didn't put out that message and could have helped that person, you know, I will feel terrible. So it's really important when we know, um, we know something's going to help people. Not everyone's going to be ready for it. And that's okay. But for, like, I even had a vegan today attack me for sharing about curing so much. And I'm like, I was like, like, first of all, like, I am like, this is my baby. Like, I am not hurting anyone. This is my safe space to share what I want to share because, you know, but she was like, you share about, like, you share about period. So I'm like, I'm Why do people try to tear someone down that's trying to do something yeah. good? It's so weird. I'm like, if I don't share about this every day and I don't share about solutions and, you know, re like things that people, like, I will, I will not forgive myself. So I need to do what I need to do. And if, if, no, if you're not ready for it, move on like don't worry the, about the it. way the way that you're helping people now you've helped thousands of people right versus like maybe you helped a few people before in yeah you know and, we and were doing it all for free right we were already yeah. like helping people we were writing like you said it's like when someone's ready to go vegan it's like you want to write them a recipe list you want to write them a grocery list you want to do all this stuff for them but we were like burning out because we couldn't help that many people with just telling them like what to make every day. It's just like, this is such a, um, you know, it's such an easier system that we can, we can easily share this with so many more people without taxing our energy like crazy. Yeah. People, they, people get hung up on, like, I think the money thing, like I said before, okay. When you think about making money, like I said, a job or whatever, but also people associate money with, doing something shitty that they don't like, you know? So it's, it's, it's hard for people to process doing something good and getting compensated for doing something good. You know what I mean? But like, why, why is that the par Why are we in the other paradigm? Why are, why do people get paid so well in the oil industry? So well in the pharmaceutical industry, right? Doctors so much and they celebrate them. You're an amazing accomplishment. Oh my goodness, seven years, medical school, 100K plus a year, you got the Lambo, whatever the situation, it's so much celebration, right? It's like the culture is celebrate that. So when someone's like, well, no, I, if I help someone, that's for free. Like, excuse me, I don't, I'm not going to get paid for that. But if I, if I destroy the environment, and I destroy some people's lives and I destroy some animals and I get paid, that's good. I'm good with that. That's the only way I'll take some money. Like what, that's where people get really hung up on. You know what I mean? I think a big, like a big part of what people see, you know, and they're, and they're really stuck on that. It's kind of a, oh it's so I want to like screen record what you just said there. <laughs> Perfect. It's like, it's such an anomaly that like, good we can't get money but if you're gonna do harm like that's okay somehow like lawyers are screwing people over and or like, even or even physical harm to your body is so celebrated when you go out there you work back-breaking work construction my dad did construction whatever any kind of hard physical labor you know out on the oil rigs any kind of hard physical like a lot of times, I mean, I think it should be more celebrated, some of the stuff, but it, that's still way more celebrated to go kill yourself, you know, to making the money. Well, you got to do what you got to do to make that bread and support that family, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but 
like you don't have to kill yourself anymore no no exactly like i you know it's just we have to like flip it on its head because it's all ass backwards right now there's you know so and then people think that it's like this you know people are hung up on network marketing being um predatory and being a, a pyramid and it's like oh my god actually the corporate world because i know both of us have experienced that and it's like extremely predatory um how we're treated is like terrible and it is a complete they even pyramid. put like now hiring on your receipt hey want to apply want to apply we're hiring on your receipts i mean look at even just like pharmaceuticals being like in your face at every commercial, um, big like these ads for like you know A and W like whatever. It's like I'm getting flyers every day on these things. Like that's invasive. Like I'm getting like that. You're polluting the world. Just putting ads in my in my mailbox now, and it's like um, so many things that we're completely bombarded with everything. That's but that's and that's okay. That's accepted. Like that's. <laughs> No one is, no one's angry at them, you know, but then like just small business, like us coming from this like place of just like wanting to heal the world and help people, um, and, you know, end suffering as much as possible in any way. It's like that is somehow like, um, you know, we've been very attacked, I know, and there's, we need to absolutely talk more about this because that alone on a whole other level, like we need to normalize kind, ethical, uh, uh, like where everyone wins and there's like actually like it's like it's just no we need to talk about it more because people just don't understand it it's weird because it starts at such a young age like even when you think when you're in school like ooh, it was cool to smoke a cigarette or ooh, it was cool to ditch class or it was cool to to yell out something in the middle of class that was kind of rude or a one-liner joke or it was cool to be the class cl it was like we've such normalized it's so cool to to not to not do what's right. Yeah. Like it's, it's the cool thing. It's so weird how we norm, it just starts when we're so young. That's so true. That's so true. It's like, um, I found with, um, when I started kind human, I remember saying like, I want to flip that on its head. I want kind humans to be the cool, like I want to be the influence. Like I want kindness to be the new currency, the new cool and health. We need to make healthy cool. Like the same way we normalize eating these, like it's like cool to eat hamburgers and Coke and beer and all this stuff when we're teenagers. And it's like, no, we need to make the cool. That's why we're looking for the, the leaders because we really want to influence change uh, on a big scale to make it cool to be healthy and cool to care like it's enough already to that with this whole paradigm of like cool to destruct and i i just i find it so tired and old it's, it's got to be changed yeah definitely i think that's why i resonated so much in the one of the first people i looked up to in the business world kind of and like talking about doing good in the world and making a difference was Gary Vee. Like that was his, what he was talking about. I was like, this is different. Like I, I like that idea. Like, like, yeah, why can't other businesses like think like that or other, you know, CEOs, like it just makes sense, you know? And if it can be done, then why not? And if it could be done even better, then definitely why not? Um, well, that's why we connected, right? Because we're very, um, we were already in alignment. We wanted to, um, you know, make the world a better place. And we wanted to make it cool to care. And um, that's why it's like we're joining. So for people who are watching, it's like if this resonates with you, this is like we're, we're not, this is not a, like we want to be successful along. Like this is like how we can help more people and how we can take in more people who are already leaders, who already know I'm here for something big. Uh, that this is a vehicle, you know, because honestly, we were trying to make it alone, right? We were entrepreneurs already. We were, you know, doing the YouTube thing. We were doing like, you know, doing all this for basically we were putting a lot of energy and there was, you know, there's no support. There's no um, community around it. And it's, it's very hard to make it. I know a lot of even like health coaches out there and, you know, people out there who are just struggling. And this, it's like, if you can open your, like, let your ego go because we don't need, like, let that go. That's an old paradigm that we need to do it alone. Uh, just let it go. It's such a burden to bear. We can actually, our superpower as a species is working together, you know, and um, that's what we need to tap into. It working, working together and creativity, I think, are, like, the human superpower, like, 
that's why we that's part of why we're have such a crazy society as we do yeah 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 and we need to we need we need more people we need more people who are you know making the shift with us and to because it's a we're at a pivotal time in our history like we're at that pivotal time where if no one stands up to make these changes uh we're going the way of extinction on all all of us and so it's really you know we really do we're, we're called upon we're kind of the reluctant leaders it's not like we ever we were born being like i want to lead it's like no like oh my god there's so much stuff that needs to like not be happening in this world like no one's doing anything about it okay like if you feel that then you're meant to be like we're meant to be locked on because it's like this is what we need like yeah that says we need to make changes yeah 100 percent, definitely <laughs> let's do it. i think it's been well said and um, I appreciate you coming on yeah. um, during this time. I know even the just from the beginning of the video, you know, talking about, you know, from my five year journey and stuff like that, like you were one of the first few people, you know, joining me or that I learned of online, you know, um, back then and just us fighting together online through Facebook. And like, here we are, you know, five years later and 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 all the ups and downs and and all the trial and error we've done a lot of similar things you know like try this that didn't work try this that works you know and just over the time you know just figuring out what works best and and i think um there's it's like just the beginning it's weird like even though it's five years it feels like just just starting you know just just beginning and so yeah anyone that's listening you know, i have so many people i mean i have a lot of a lot of followers and a lot of people that i think think alike and i think want the same thing and i think that it just takes them just you know, making that decision and believing in themselves and believing in, in that we're on the same mission with you together. Like we're here doing this together. Like we're not, you know, like you see us every day, like, you know, what we're trying to fight for, what we stand for, you know? And I think that's that, like I said, in the last video, like it's important looking to people that are doing what you want to be doing and making accomplishments and, 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 and doing, you know, creating change and making change um and and that are actually living you know maybe the lifestyle that you want as well because it's one thing to be like that person's making change but they look miserable like well i don't know if you want that you know i mean if that's really what you want then i guess go for that but i think looking for people that are change makers and then also figured out how to do it and be happy and healthy and you know have a have a good family like that's also that's that's winning you know if you do it at the expense with, with having nothing then yeah. i don't know if that's winning, you know um and so yeah i would leave it at that and um yeah, I think that's it. Is there anything else you want to say? Oh, well, I, I even, you know, the animals want us to be happy, right? Happiness is energy, and we need to be raising that vibration because everyone benefits from our happiness. And I just, my message, my final message is unity. We need to come together, find where we unite, and stop dividing. Thank yes, you. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, and talk to you soon. Bye, Ken.